Well, look, Brexit, if you analyze it from the strict sort of legal perspective, from the legal kaleidoscope, the reality is that we had, after accession, an act that says that uh, decisions uh, and the European Union treaties and decisions that stem from the treaties are all uh, binding in Gibraltar and they take precedence over, over domestic law. And so, as a result, the, the, the fact is that all our laws have been influenced for, for many, many years now, many decades, uh, with European Union law. So it's quite difficult. It's not just a question of saying, I'm leaving the club. The fact is that all our laws have been influenced for 40 odd years with European Union law, so it's quite complex to strip back the influence of European Union law on all that. So clearly Brexit has kicked up a, a lot of complex legal issues and political ones. Um, the position of Scotland, the position of Gibraltar, the position of those jurisdictions that actually voted to remain. Britain itself has not set out what its negotiating stance, what its objectives are. Uh, it itself has different views within the government on it. There are Remainers and Brexiteers. And, and while the Prime Minister has made clear that Brexit means Brexit, it still requires a great degree of work by civil servants and negotiators in the background to understand where we're going. It is only then and after that process has started with the involvement of the Gibraltar government that we will properly understand the impact on Gibraltar law of Brexit. One of the issues that you raise every year, a matter for concern, is the issue of uh, access to justice, uh, which uh, you have described as causing a certain element of disenfranchisement amongst uh, many people who have to yeah. access the courts. Oh, absolutely. It, it is clear that Gibraltarians are now legally disenfranchised. The income threshold is £5,000 per year. Almost everyone in Gibraltar is now unable to apply for legal assistance. Um, and that creates a real difficulty, a real hurdle in people coming to the courts and pursuing legitimate claims and objectives that they may have to seek legal remedies. That has to change. We are in discussions with government about that. At the moment, and over the last year, our, our efforts have been dominated. The Bar Council's efforts have been dominated by our desire to push forward the regulation agenda. But over the next 12 months, we want to concentrate on legal assistance because that is an area where there is a need for urgent reform. Well, as you said, regulation is one area where there has been progress, so tell us about that. Well, in regulation, of course, we've had quite a lot of work being done. It culminated in the issue of a consultative paper on a new legal services bill uh, in July. The, it, it closed, the consultation period closed in September. We are now hopefully in the final stages of discussion with the Chief Justice and the Minister for Justice so to allow the presentation of that bill in Parliament which I personally would like to see early in the in the new year and if the government is supportive of that then I see no reason why we cannot have a new Legal Services Act as from next year. That act is very important because it updates and modernizes the whole process of regulation of legal services. It is comprehensive and from the point of view of the consumer it is also very important. Additionally, it also modernizes systems uh, of rules, of conduct, discipline and regulation for lawyers and people providing uh, legal services and it is very important from the perspective of the practitioner. Under that regulation we will have a special and new code of conduct for Gibraltar uh, which, which uh, deals and caters for a fused profession so it will be the most important advance in 50 years if it indeed happens.